Hi, my name is Laura Litton, and I'm the Director of Teacher Happiness here at ClassKick, and I'm so excited that you could join us this morning for our ClassKick 301. This is not going to go through the basics of how to use ClassKick. That was recorded in either of our two previous webinars, 101 and 201. This is going to be a deep dive into the very expert level of things that you can accomplish that teachers around the world are doing right now with their students. But if you need any help or if you get stuck along the way, feel free to reach out to me at laura at classkick.com or by using the live support tool on our homepage, uh, or you feel free to call me as well. Uh, my number is 773-981-5532. Okay, so what we're gonna go in today is seven questions, things that you can solve in ClassKick that people have been asking and doing with their students. The first is, how do I have my students collaborate in ClassKick? So the way that I suggest that is by actually having them log in with the same name on two separate devices. If you have your single device login or single iPad login turned off, then you can have two separate students logging in at the same time from separate places. So if I'm logging in as Paul, for example, to HEKSU1, and another person logs in as Paul as well, or if we use a joint name like Paul Andy or our two names together, whatever it might be, then anything that I'm writing on the screen here will show up to him and anything that he writes will show up to me. So we've had a lot of people that go back and forth, drawing, typing, finding images, taking audio recordings, and creating one assignment together as a really great way of collaborating while the teacher is able to view and make comments to both people at the same time. They're essentially helping each other out. So maybe one of them is doing a math equation, and then they draw the, the you know curve of, on the graph or whatever it might be, and the other student comes in and goes, no, according to my numbers, it should be a little bit higher, and then come down a little bit steeper, or whatever it might be. They can have those conversations either while they're sitting next to each other on two separate devices or across the room or in different classrooms or if you really want to think global about this you can have a sister classroom in another country and have those kids signing in with the same names and talking to each other even though they're all the way across the country so that's a great way for students to collaborate just by logging in together Okay, other question, second question, how can I have just certain students helping each other? So you see that here in our student helper menu, we've got all of the students that are on this roster. Well, a great way to control which students are helping each other is to make a new roster where you only have certain students on it. So for example, if I only had five students on one roster and I turn on student helpers, only those five kids are gonna be able to help each other and everyone else in my class is either on a different roster or they're also all segmented out into different places. And that way, every single one of these hands represents one of the people in my small group or one of the people that my teacher wants me to help. And I'm not going out and either providing confusing help or maybe over the top and, and too easy uh, tips and hints for other people than what they can handle. So that's a great way to control which people are helping which students. Just take your rosters, segment them outwards, and then turn on student helpers within those individual rosters where every student represents only someone in that group of five or six students that you want to help. Okay. The third one, how can I differentiate my assignments more easily so that I can hand them out to different students? Okay. The real quick uh, tip and hint about this is to take an assignment that you've already created. So for example, this addition assignment, I'm showing them uh, real quickly what addition is. It's bringing together two or more numbers to make a new total. And here's my example of one plus one equals two. And I've got that from different ways. And then I want them to go and try it there at Math Trainer. Okay, so one of the ways that I could real quickly differentiate this out for different groups of students is to take it and duplicate it. And then in that uh, second version of it, making it di more difficult or easier. So either giving them more scaffolding or less scaffolding. So maybe in this addition copy, I realize that my higher group does not need all of this addition is with my audio recorded voice or these pictures. So I come in here and I delete this page off of here. And now they only have, um, you get better at addition with practice, try it here. And so all of the ones in the higher group are coming to this class code. So my, my roster goes here and they come onto these to this one. My medium students are using that original edition one that has the three pages with a little bit more help. And then maybe my lower students need even more scaffolding than that. So I duplicate it again. And in that second copy of edition, I'm able to give even more help. So maybe I go in here and I insert a new page at the front and I just break it down with lots of examples or I'm live modeling for them. So I'm drawing on their screen and I'm showing them that three plus two is something just by having that 
right on all of their screens together. We talk about grouping, we talk about counting, we talk about fast ways to put things together. Whatever it might be, I've now given that opportunity for my students to see it in the way that they need it. So there's a quick way to differentiate using your assignments, make duplicate copies, and then change the copies according to the scaffolding that your students need. Okay. Uh, fourth question we get asked a lot is uh, how can I point kids out or how can I differentiate within the same assignment? So here's a great way, Laura, of differentiating within you know, separate assignments, but that gets kind of can clutter up my assignment list. How can I do that all in one place? We actually have a lot of teachers that do this. Uh, so they'll take one assignment, they'll give the same prompt or a little bit different prompt to different kids. I want my lowest kids to just tell me what's the main idea of this paragraph. So I give them three questions. And I go to different students and I say, I want you to answer question two. I want you to answer question three. I want you to answer question four. And then here's what I did for those questions. Question two, big, bright, tell me what is the main goal of the contest and underline your text reference in blue. Boom, that's what I want you to do. Everyone gets a minute or two minutes. That's what I need you to do. To that second group, my medium students, I said, not only do I want you to underline the main goal in blue, but I also want you to describe what the passage is mostly about. Who, what, when, how, and I want you to answer those questions for me on this second question. So I've got those, those medium kids getting pushed at their level all from the same prompt on the first page. And then that last group, I want them to do three things. Not only what the main goal is, not only describing what the passage is about, but creating a new use of bubble wrap to share with the class. And hey, if I have students that are finishing extremely quickly, maybe I misunderstood what their ability level was and I put them in this first group, I'm like, great, go on to the next page and answer that second question because they've done the first one, they haven't done the second one yet. And if everybody is getting to that final question of creating the new use of bubble wrap, great, I want to push all my kids there anyway, but now I've got that opportunity to differentiate right in the assignment. And there's a couple of ways that you can do this. So besides just walking around and physically telling the students, if you know ahead of time which ones you want to do which ones, you could list them out here. So you could say, Caitlin, I want you to do number two, or I want all of my Tigers group to do number four, or whatever it might be for your differentiation wise, You've got those options here to be able to talk to your students and tell them that you expect them to do something. And it, the, the main thing that you need to have in that conversation and in that classroom is an understanding that we're all doing different things because we all need different things in order to improve. So make sure you have those kinds of culture building conversations with your students and then feel free to differentiate right in that assignment. Okay, I also get asked different questions like how can class kick, so this is our question number five, show the different levels of SAMR, or how can I, as a class kick teacher, really push my students up that level of SAMR? And so what I've got here is four different examples of the Gift of the Magi assignment, and we actually have this online in a PD bundle under our Kickstart Your PD bundle uh, section of our website that shows you as the teacher how this were created, our thought process behind it, and what you can do with your students in order to get them up that level. But basically, I've gone through each level of the blooms and DOK levels and m married that with the different levels of SAMR. So at that first level of substitution, I'm just asking my students to read the gift of the Magi. There's some pictures that I've included, and then at the end of that, I want them to make a list of the main events and then use that list of main events to retell their story. And I put in that rubric there that I want them to give their rating to first, and then I come through later, and I give them my own rating, then I push them up that level. So the next level blooms, the next level DOK, and using augmentation, I've now included the video of what the Gift of the Magi is, an old-fashioned an old one. I've included my voice recording each paragraph, as well as some links to sample places where they can get definitions from for any terms that they're unsure of. So all of that is included in this version of the assignment. Uh, I Also, at the end of it, I'm asking students, now that they've read it, to use text, drawing images, and their voice to continue the story. So I want them to take what they know about character motivations and keep this story going. So I'm pushing them up that Blooms and pushing them up that SAMR model. Now to go to created the, this assignment and changed the beginning and the end of it. And that way I could keep all of the hard work I had put into recording each paragraph and all of the great links to vocabulary definitions and more information. But here, involved in the story. And so I include in here 
some examples of symbolism. And when I have an example for them to do, then I come in here and I say, here's an example of what I want uh, this final product from you to look like, the symbolism of love and how it's depicted in the story. Now it's your turn. Show me that symbolism. And of course, if I needed to give more differentiation in individual students, I could just jump into one student and I could give them a sentence starter. So here's Alyssa and I'm coming in here and I'm telling Alyssa, please use this sentence starter or whatever it might be. And then I've given her that individualized help in this differentiated assignment at this different level of SAMR. And finally, at that redefinition level, really giving the students an authentic audience, I want them to take the story as it was originally written, and I want them to use that same powerful imagery and symbolism and take it and adapt it for current day. So people, they sit there, they're not quite sure of what we're talking about with Della cutting off her hair and, and him selling his watch. Like, how are these things important? What is the equivalent today? bring it forward, make it true, and then post it on our Twitter or our blog or our Google Plus community and show the world what you've come up with and respond to comments, ask for comments, find those people out there who want to read what you're writing and, and engage with them. Okay. About a minute left, so last two questions. One, how can I, I'm doing great work in my school, I want to get other people involved and I want to make sure that we're not duplicating work, that we're sharing it, that we're collaborating as teams, collaborating as students. I want to share my work out with other people. Come here to the share button and you've got two ways of sharing it. You can share it out with an individual email and then that person will see the email saying that they've gotten it shared. But even bigger than that, you've got a social media following, you've got people that know you and they follow your blogs. Go and grab that public link and post it in your blog and say, here's what I'm working on. How does it help you? How does it helpful in your school or what would you do with your students or how would you advise that I change it? or improve it so that it would make it even more powerful. Get your assignments out there with your name on them and the imagery and all the things that you're positively using with your students and just you know, humble brag about all the great things that you're doing. Use that copy link to put it out there to the world. Finally, seventh question. How can I um, make sure that I am able to see what other people are doing? So in the same way that we put that out there, how can I see what other great people are doing? Come over here to where our sample assignments are, grab one and actually change it even before you save it to your page. So you come in here, you see this math ratios assignment that's loading and you're like, wow, this is a great assignment, but my students don't need all of this. It's a great pretty picture in the front. I actually, I don't know if I need this page or mm, here's these guidelines. Uh, I have a little bit different guidelines. Maybe I'm gonna come in and change these. I actually can edit all of of these pages and everything that's written here before I even save it. So maybe in my classroom they're not called guidelines. Maybe these are called uh, guides to success or whatever it might be. So I can come in here and I can make that change even before I save the assignment. And then as soon as I save it in there, now I'm ready to go for my students. So come in, grab an assignment, see what other people are doing. Here's this practice using class kick, drawing a blue line. I know my kids know how to draw a blue line. I'm gonna give them a different thing. Uh, help one of your peers, which means that they have to know how to raise their hands or whatever it might be. Um, Come in here, make those changes even before you save it, and then you've got everything in there ready to go uh, before you even get started. Okay, so those are the seven questions. How do our students collaborate? Uh, how can I get students to only help certain people? How can I differentiate by assignment? How can I differentiate within an assignment? Show them the different levels of SAMR. Uh, how can I share with my colleagues so we're not duplicating work? And how can I see what other people are doing? Those are all of your uh, questions answered in this quick 301. Please share this out with your colleagues and your friends. And if you have any questions, let me know at laura at classkick.com or by using the live tool on our homepage or right here. You can message us and hear back today. And it was great getting to talk to all of you this morning. Thanks so much and have a wonderful day.